to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. It's football time. Once again, I I kind of forgot that it was football time. Yeah, so my intro, my welcome, it, it went really it went pretty long. I was gonna cut you off no matter what. That I, I appreciate that. I want to see that someday. I want to see you just go come in right through it. <laughs> I just want him going, ah. Cut the mics. You use just football time all over him. You can't stop football time. No, Jason. no, you can't. I don't care if you want it no, or you yeah. don't want it. It's football time. Yeah, it's, happy. it's Thursday. There's going to be a game. I believe I heard yesterday that um, starting today, we yes. have. Yes. And now, this is uh, between collegiate yes. football and NFL football. We have. 55 consecutive days of football? Yeah, as in... Is that too much football? Not for me, because I don't care about college. <laughs> so, uh, And if you do care about college, if you love college football and you love the NFL, then probably not. You're probably jazzed about that. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's a lot of football. They tried to cancel football time last week. The Cowboys and Giants did their best. Yeah. But uh, we get a different game tonight. Oh man, that game was so bad. <laughs> it was it was a rough game. <laughs> my, my uh so my uh my in laws currently live with me and they, they got home. I'm I'm watching the game and I'm just I'm sure my face is looking <laughs> just it it's reflecting what the television is uh projecting into my eyes. And they're like, What well, you know, how's the game? I'm like, this is the worst game I've ever watched. Well, we we turn the page. You know? Yes. We, we've got football time tonight. We got yes. a better game. You get to watch Kyle Pitts run routes tonight. We get to watch Laser Mayfield, baby. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that should be fun. Uh, welcome into the show. We've got our starts of the week today. We're getting into the matchups for week five. We got news to catch you up on. We got players we hope are going to play that we don't know are going to play because they've been banged up and they have uh, anything from a mild uh, low ankle sprain to a mild high ankle sprain to a maybe some other it, kind it's of in his elbow now yeah it's moving moving target but uh lots to talk about i want to invite everybody listening to join the foot.com become a supporter of this show get access to our incredible community of foot clan supporters you get to uh you get to be part of the discord fifty thousand plus over there you get premium tools and resources for in season including the start sit tool and the ultimate dashboard and the extra episodes every week and our our dev team working very hard to get the Foot Clan perks out to our free in-season app, which you can pick up on the App Store or the Google Play Store. So check that out. And you can learn more at jointhefoot.com. Let's jump right into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right, Devontae Adams is not expected to play. Shocker. Uh, what? You know, the hamstring, from what I hear, it's going to get better soon. So it was reported, I, I forget who it was who, who looked into it, and they are saying it that the injury is real, that it's a legitimate injury, because there's got to be the question. Everyone has the question. I'm sure the teams yeah. trying to <laughs> trade for Devontae Adams are like, okay, is he healthy? Like it, When we trade for him, is he going to be able to play week one? Um, I forget which I mean, reporter. It, it was Diana Rossini. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. She, she said, I mean, I've been told it's a real injury. He's expected to miss this week. But, you know, could be back next week if there's no snags. So, I mean, the snag is what jersey you have to put on and what locker room you're in when you're putting it on. I mean, it, it's the trade talks are going to heat up. Devontae Adams has played his last down as a Raider. And is it the Jets? Is it the Steelers? Is it the Saints? Is it somebody else? There's going to be... Mike, you mentioned it yesterday. You were you were spot on. If a team's willing to take some, uh, if the Raiders are willing to pay some of the money, right, a deal's going to get done, and uh, you're going to see Devontae Adams play for somebody else, and and so it's going to be very interesting for fantasy. And one of the players we didn't bring up. I mean, we talked about Trey Tucker and Jacoby Myers and stepping into the void at wide receiver, but Brock Bowers oh, is yes. is positioned to be the new alpha of this. 
passing game, and that needs to be noted because maybe after a bit of a down week, you could swing a trade for him or something like that. Probably not. Malik Neighbors unlikely to be ready for week five dealing with the concussion. It's still a possibility, but it seems like a long shot according to ESPN's uh, ESPN reporting. I, you know, this sucks. We want to see Neighbors out there, but the concussion was always going to be a challenge. Yeah, you, you usually miss one game. We kind of had hopes that because they were early that they'd have 10 days and he'd be able to get back. It looks like that's not going to happen. Devin Singletary um, has... Oh, oh, I'm a grind! Uh, let, me, let me check groinindex.com. Oh, he's, he's still going to be there. He's he hurting. Still, um, oh, we got it. Zamir White, though, did say... Oh, no. And did, I quote, ah, my groin! Oh, that was Zamir. Okay. He did get added to the... Madison, Jay. Groin index. <laughs> Your addition of Alexander yeah. Madison. I mean, I'm, I'm rolling him out there. <laughs> if he's got the backfield to himself. Whew, I am lucky. Um, it's not that bad. No, you could it's do really, way worse. I mean... Anyways, he sucks, but he's not going to suck this week. Singletary has a shot to play this week, but he is hurt. I, I, you know, I view that as 50 50 right now. The Giants offense, you know, a, lo a lot of people might be running to the waiver wire to pick up Tyrone Tracy in case Singletary is gone, but I Which feel he like did. I got him for zero dollars. A lot, of, a lot okay. of people like me. <laughs> well, I mean, I put a zero dollar bid. I, yeah. I didn't, I assumed I would not. You walked get him. to the waiver wire. I walked to the wa waiver wire and I said, all right, come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on, get, get in the truck. You're, let's go. Uh, you're on my team now. Um, it's going to be tough sledding. This is the the Giants' offense is going to be rough. I think without neighbors. Yeah, I mean you can dart throw Darius Slayton this week. Uh, 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 you can also, I mean, Wandale Robinson. Yeah, Wandale's a good play. Should have, you know, fifteen passes his way. So yeah, Der uh, Devin Singletary dealing with the groin says he feels better. We'll see. Trey McBride limited should be back this week. Khalil yeah. Shakir. Didn't practice due to an ankle injury. That's a little bit. Yeah, remember, he got banged up during the game. Unsettling the Bills. Bills being talked about as a possible destination for uh, Mr. Devontae Adams, which uh, I don't, you know, I don't know if they want to go down that road again. But maybe. Yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that uh, Devontae Adams is just too good of a player. Any team that gets him right now, their championship odds. Like, I, I would. You know, a lot of times you see an injury happen, a trade happen, and nothing, unless a quarterback goes down, you don't see um, lines move a lot, whether it's for a, a weekly game or Super Bowl odds. I would imagine the team that receives Devontae Adams, their Super Bowl odds will improve. Yeah, no question. So they'll, they'll be in contention. Joe Mixon didn't practice on Wednesday. He had practiced at the end of last week. I was talking to Matthew Betts. He was still kind of, um, you know, thinking he's going to play. Maybe it was Kyle. Maybe it was Kyle who yeah. thought he was going to play. But you got to monitor this because it could be Cam Akers again, which I've – No. It's just not – No. It's not Cam Akers is the story because it seems like it's going to be Cam Akers, but what it really is is it's Cam Akers sometimes, and then in two minute and in third down, it's Daria Gumbawale, and that combination is not enough. Like you need – Mixon was a three down back. Cam Akers would be a fool me thrice, and I'm not going for that. Yeah, I mean, two weeks ago he had nine fantasy points. Yeah, five shame fa on him. Fantasy, five fantasy points this last yep. week. And that's that was shame a, on me. a good matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars. He only played 40% of the, the snaps. that's the problem. The matchup seems great. Well, and the matchup seems great against Buffalo. Um, however, it really is a fool I, me thrice I'm going to be situation. fooling myself thrice. I mean, if, oh, my, no! if Mixon's out, I don't have a choice. i got no. players on by like Jameer Gibbs and um, – Ready to be hurt again. All right, Cordero Patterson, Jalen Warren didn't practice. It's a Sunday night game. Najee was awful, yeah. but on the field it's, enough to do some things in the passing but, game. I think it was like 13 for 19 on the ground. It was brutal. It, he had a big play through the air, and this is unfortunate for – I despite Devin Singletary playing poorly against Dallas last week, I'm still going to target them, especially with the – uh, deletion of of two of their top tier defenders, uh, that like Najee. If Najee's alone, it, that's an easy start. Just just volume and hope he gets into the end zone. Clyde edwards alaire was designated to return from the NFI list to further muddy the backfield in Kansas City. That one seems to me like it. It's probably Kareem this week. The big question then becomes the week after that. Once once Clyde has had two full weeks of practice, does Kareem look good this week and they stick with him? Does it turn into just a full 
like a three man rotation with Clyde, him and Samaje. Well, I, I, I don't Pete, think he needs the the week. This wasn't a physical injury. This was a mental time, and he knows the the system and knows the play playbook. I mean, Kareem Hunt came off the street, and they gave him work. I think well, we're going. No, but they had him for a they had him for a full week. No, but to Jason's point, like I mean, Clyde already knows everything, and he's not recovering from a physical injury. Yeah, you're going to see this week what their plan is. I don't think it's going to be like they're slowly going to put him on the field and then next week unleash him. I just don't see the reason P. for Ryan that. P. Ryan had 40% of snaps last week, too. Yeah. So right now, if I've got to start one, it's obviously Hunt, um, and we'll just find out as the game plays on whether Clyde is just a, a backup that is active on the team or whether he's really involved. Nick Chubb, designated to return from the PUP. The videos of him returning to practice were awesome. Incredible recovery. What, he, do, you do, is, what do you do with him? Because I think everybody in the world is rooting for him. Yes. Nobody doesn't love Nick Chubb. And also, he is hes a superhuman. He is truly a he, he has come back from horrifically devastating knee injuries already before. And when he was back from that was – you know, Derrick Henry. She was just unbelievable. He was he was Nick Chubb, but this is an injury you bet against at an age that you especially bet against it. So I, I have a hard time deciding whether I want to like buy into maybe he will return to form or just go. He might be a he might feel like a superhuman, but in truth, I believe he is actually a human. Yeah, I think he is actually a human, and if he is odds actually are, a human, odds are that he's just a regular human. Then yeah. he should not be able to come back to well, previous taken, form. I mean, they take they took more time. That's good. Um, him hurt is probably better than Deontay Foreman healthy. So you know, from I think he'll always be. I don't think there's ever going to be a point where we're looking at this team this year and Nick Chubb is, you know, getting old school numbers in terms of snaps and opportunities. But could it be a great complimentary one-two with Jerome Ford? I think that's in the cards. I mean, I, not right away. I wish I could tell you the medical side. I don't know how he feels. You know, none of us do. So we don't know if two weeks in he, he feels great or if this is going to be a really long process because it was just a severe injury that he's just getting out there. So I think having him on rosters is probably important. This team's going to get, by the way, like they're one of the worst offenses, right? The Browns statistically have been one of the worst. David Njoku is coming back this week, okay? Judy has been, you know, a contributor so far. Amari Cooper, the return of Nick Chubb, like the offense in general in Cleveland should improve. There should be more opportunities around the goal line coming up for somebody to contribute. I mean, Mike, do you have a different perspective? No. I don't want to beat it into the ground. It's just we don't know a lot about how he feels. Yeah, I, I think in once he actually hits the field, I think you're still a few weeks away. He's it's a it's a good player to stash. I mean, his roster percentage is extremely high, so this would be you have to if you don't have him, you're gonna have to go trade for him. He's not gonna be on your waiver wire at this moment. But the the offense, it should be better, but it's still it's still Voldemort. If they lose a couple more games here coming up soon, I, I think they'll trade Amari Cooper. You know, like a this is one of those towards the trade deadline chief targets for, for Cooper, um, which could obviously hurt the offense as a whole. Yeah, could make David Njoku a good pickup yes. right now. Yes, it could. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Starts of the week. All right, it's time to jump in some of those confidence plays, those players that maybe you're uh, maybe you're on the edge of, of feeling good about and, and need somebody to tell you, yeah, you got permission to put that guy in there and be confident. Oh, man. Yeah, call the blacksmith, boys. Oh, you got some undies? Oh, I got some spicy ones today. Oh, okay. Great. Um, let's start at quarterback. I'm going to go Jordan Love against the Rams this week. Uh, I started, started slow last week. We're in the middle of mocking. Mike, for making the Jordan Love over Sam Darnold decision. Oh, I was mocking yourself. I was mocking myself, yeah. And With tears. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he, he, he did pretty well. Yeah, but then who got it right, boys? Oh, you're a genius. But I'm going Jordan Love. He's yeah. he's had a uh, a couple of great starts while he's been healthy, quarterback 11 and quarterback 2. It's not always pretty, but, you know, Dontavian Wicks, the weapons he has with, obviously, Jaden Reed, uh, Tucker Craft looked good last week, Romeo Dobbs. 
and the Rams dead last in yards per attempt allowed. We're expecting big things from from the Packers this week, and um, I'm excited for Jordan Love. I adore that start. I came into the dock to make that my start of the week and was very disappointed because you had him. Instead, I'm going to have to go with C.J. Stroud against Buffalo through the first month of the season. We've had two good, one meh, one bust game. It's kind of been a mixed bag for Stroud as their play calling has been stupid without Joe Mixon. Uh, but I wouldn't pivot off of him this week for a streaming quarterback. Buffalo just lost Vaughn Miller to a four-game suspension. And if you look at C.J. Stroud's six touchdowns so far this season, five of them have come from a clean pocket. You get Tank Dell back, and this game has a nice 47-point over-under. So I think Stroud is is a uh, solid play this week. Brock Purdy against the Arizona Cardinals in his three starts against Arizona. 38, 35, and 45 points scored. San Francisco has the highest implied team total of the week. Brock Purdy, look, he's second with in passing yards. Arizona's defense uh, sucks. And as long as Jordan Mason doesn't take every single touchdown this week, Brock Purdy is going to be a really strong option. All right, my running back is complicated. It's complicated because it's um, like, it's not – Like Avril Levine. Exactly, exactly, Mike. That's thank you um, for that <laughs> reference. Uh, no, it, it was going to be Joe Mixon against Buffalo. The matchup's great, and the Bills are dead last in yards per carry allowed, receptions to opposing running backs, schedule adjusted fantasy points to running backs. It's not Cam Akers though. So if Joe Mixon plays, I'm telling you right now, go play him. Put him right into your lineup and play him. But the lack of a practice yesterday, and we don't know today. And I've told the producers break in if we get a practice report out of Houston. But right now we just don't know if he's going to be out there. There's some confidence by some people that he's going to be out there, so I would say play him if he is. But my backup start of the week, Chuba Hubbard against the Chicago Bears. Right. He has been incredible. He has. And he it's not like he's on the field every single down. Like Miles Sanders, we were getting annoyed how many opportunities he had last like, week. Also, Carolina, get him out of here. Sanders, yeah, I mean, stop it. Yeah. Whatever they're doing is working because Chuba's been over 100 yards rushing two consecutive weeks. It could be higher. He's got nine receptions <laughs> in each of those games. Nope, not in each. Sorry. Nine total. I was like, oh. In those I, games I combined. struggled to hit my over last week. I know he didn't have I mean, nine. You get, you get 20 opportunities with Chuba Hubbard. Yeah. So 20 opportunities against Chicago, I, I'm okay with that. Yeah, and, and to clarify, uh, as things are coming into, um, uh, you know, the – as as we are starting to have clarity on defenses, the Bears' defense is really, really good. But they are much, much better in the passing game. It's it's difficult to pass on them. Their pass rush is great. Their corners are good. But you can run on them. They're kind of turning into a run funnel. So I, I really like the Chuba confidence play. And they're just scoring points with Dalton. So it gives him a chance at a touchdown every week. All right, running back, Jason. Running back, I'm going to go with Travis Etienne. Oh. I know, I know. It's been a slow plotting start uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars and, and for ETN. I went back and I watched. RB2 on that team. I That's watched. Weird. Stop it. <laughs> well, you know, when when Andy's my guy, Tank, uh, Tank Bigsby's looking so good. Goodness um, gracious. I went back and I watched Travis ETN uh, film yesterday. I, tr I, I wanted to see, like, you know, does he look bad? Does he look injured? Is, and and I, didn't, I didn't see anything that I didn't like. Um, he, it didn't work out for him. He hasn't been great yet. But I think this matchup is too good to, to bench him. Um, teams are running the ball non-stop against Indy, 37.8 times per game. That is most in the NFL through four games. They've seen the most opponent rushing attempts of any team over the last decade. So you know ETN is going to get the work, and they're also giving up the second most rushing yards allowed per game. Uh, they are 24th in schedule adjusted fantasy points to the running back. Last year against these Colts, who they played twice, he was the running back six and the running back three. This is a great matchup for ETN. Let, let me throw something out there on ETN, by the way. they The, the Jags are 0-4, and they picked up the fifth-year option on him, but there's been some word out there. Jeremy Fowler from ESPN talked about teams could inquire about Travis ETN because they may not want to extend him, and if they believe they have a player in Tank Bigsby that they can move forward with, paying running backs is oh, not man. necessarily a commonality yeah. or like a uh, – popular don't do it if you're a losing team it's also Desire. not something you can do when you pay you when you made your quarterback the highest quarterback in, <laughs> in NFL history like that you can't pay both so just I'm just throwing out there I mean more injuries at the running back position by other contending teams could put him in trading contention it has nothing to do with this week's start of the week other than Tank Bigsby sure. should be on a roster 
Yeah. And my running back, look, the 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 forge is heating up. I don't think I got a call in the Smith just yet. Oh boy. But this is all about process. I'm taking the court the running back on the opposite side of that game, Jay. I'm going Trey Sermon against Jacksonville. Of course, this is only if Jonathan Taylor doesn't play, but he has not practiced uh yesterday. He didn't practice I believe he's not practicing today, despite the whatever they're trying to do at Indianapolis of promising everyone this is the mildest of mild high ankle sprains that they've ever seen. But opportunities will be there. Should be 15 or more for him, and the and the matchup is juicy. Jacksonville ranks 29th in schedule adjusted oh, fantasy man. points to the running back. They've allowed the fourth most running back receptions, and we've seen you sound backups. like You sound like me last week with Cam Akers. Uh, yeah. It's the exact same situation. So I hope – Sure. Sermon's it, better than Akers. And, but it's part of the confidence is, look, we've seen guys, Zach Moss, who were basically, their career seemed like it was toast. They were just a backup guy. And then the backup comes in for, for the Colts, and they are able to get some things done because of how they play, how fast they play. So this is, a, this is totally trusting the process. My turn on uh, wide receivers yep. here? Yes, sir. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and correlate with my start of the week at quarterback. It's Dontavian Wicks. It's Dontavian Wicks against the Rams. Going to stack with Jordan Love here. The biggest waiver wire pickup of the week by not Jason. And mm. Uh, mm. you can slide him right into the starting lineup this <laughs> Almost. week. Almost. Almost. <laughs> really close. He actually leads the team in red zone targets already this year. And this is without Christian Watson missing a full game yet. And, um, you know, been targeted on 31% of his routes. I watched all the Dontavian Wicks of the past too. week. They missed, they missed the connection like the se first seven times. Yes, or or six of the first seven targets, and he still ended up with two touchdowns and a big game. So you know, we talked about the Rams secondary. I like Wicks. He gets open. He's big. He's fast. I I, I really like him. Um, if you picked him up, I he just needs to use more of the uh the stick him. Uh, yeah, the hands That's are a, good a little idea. they're a little suspect. Yeah, but... go touch some sap. Okay. <laughs> Uh, is that the new thing? That's you the grab new a thing. tree? Yeah. Uh, oh, good, they, good. They've started planting trees on the sidelines so wide receivers can just go over. Sap up. Sap up. Um, we, my... are, we are so <laughs> dumb. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to do some anti-correlation with mine, but it will be causation. Brian Thomas Jr., the wide receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars, will score touchdowns early in this game, setting up Travis Etienne to run the clock You're out. You're going double I'm going jags? double jags. This is a get-right week for them against the Colts, who are reeling with their own injuries. They are desperately in need of this, and it's a matchup that's, that's really good. I'm playing Brian Thomas Jr. because of his talent. He is really, really good. The biggest knock at LSU uh, was we weren't sure. We weren't sure if he was... Good enough to be mm. the one. No, I mean he was a first round pick. Mm. But my no, point I just is, mean, like, don't say we. I I still <laughs> like Brian Thomas. I wasn't. Andy's anti just. Andy's, no, Andy's I was just, sure. I'm just saying. I was yeah. sure. You lied. We as a whole, we as a community, mm. we're not sure because he had 19 percent of his, uh, you know, target on 19 percent of his routes run last year in college because of Malik Neighbors. This year, through his first four games as an NFL starter, he's already up to 23 percent target share on his route runs. He has been really, really great. The Colts are allowing the second most passing yards in the NFL. We, we talked about on the um, ready to roll segment, certain run funnels, certain pass funnels, and certain defenses you just want to target all of them. And the Colts are one of those bad defenses across the league where they can score points and their defense isn't good. So I think both uh, the passing game and the running game is going to work for the Jags this week. Steel underpants. It's Jordan Whittington, rookie wide receiver for the Los Angeles Rams. It's following the entirety of the story. He was like the name of the offseason for the Los Angeles Rams, but it, but it was how does this kid get on the field when you have Cooper Cup, you got Puk Nakua, and you got Demarcus Robinson. The the path seems very limited. Then Cooper Cup and Puk Nakua both get hurt. It's been a slow rise for Jordan Whittington, but he took over. 97% of the snaps, he was the guy. Uh, oh, look, 2 is a fine play as well. But Jordan Whittington, he's he's coming through with the promise of what Sean McVay has talked about, targeted on 25% of his routes this year. That is an absurd number. He will be hitting the crosser. He's going to be hitting the plays, essentially, that, that Puka and Cooper Cup run. And the Packers secondary, it is beatable. 27th in schedule, just fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. So if you're desperate, 
He might even still be on your waiver wire. I think you should pick him up even if you're not going to play him. But if you're desperate, I think that you can you can get away with Jordan Whittington this week. Uh, Whittington or Mooney tonight? Oh, goodness gracious. I think I'd, ooh, I'd probably still go Mooney that one. Tight end start of the week. It's a big hat. I'm going Jake Turd Ferguson against Pittsburgh. <laughs> it's a funny hat. Brandon Cooks is now out one to three weeks. Ferguson was already a great start. He might be one of the best tight end starts in football here on out. Seven plus targets. I expect that tonight. He's been the tight end three and the tight end nine since returning from injury, and the Steelers haven't covered the tight end, so he's a very, very strong potential tight end one overall pick. Yeah, th this week, uh, some weeks you're you're struggling to find a, a tight end streaming guy, and this week I think there's a couple good options. I like all three of our picks. I'm going to go with Tucker Craft going with sure. your uh, love stack over there. Andy Tucker the Craft. Love stack. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I heard too. <laughs> Last week, uh, you had Tucker Craft on the field for the Packers. Nine targets, six for fifty-three and one. More importantly, he played eighty-six percent of the snaps. We saw this in Week One with Love. He played ninety percent of the sn the snaps. You had Musgrave as the the rookie tight end last year who looked like, oh wow, this is going to be an important player for the Packers offense. Had a lot of big fantasy games. If you haven't paid attention, there's been a full swi switcheroo. It's Tucker Craft. He is the starter. This last week, 86% of the snaps, while Musgrave was 33% of the snaps. Routes run, everything. Participation, obviously, the targets were there last week. The the week two and week three kind of throw the whole Packers offense out as they were trying to figure out life without Jordan Love. I think this is a player that might be good the rest of the season um, and, and the matchup this week is fantastic against the Rams, another one of those teams we want to target basically every position against. Titanium underpants. We, you got to upgrade this one because it's Jawan Johnson of the Saints taking on Kansas City. Look, process-wise, Kansas City, dead last, tight end receptions allowed, tight end receiving yards, schedule adjusted points to the tight end position, and it was not just Isaiah Likely. Remember that weird game against the Bengals where Mike Gesicki all of a sudden was a relevant player? That's true. And then scores negative points last week because that's where you can beat the Kansas City Chiefs right now. And the the rise, the takeover, I think it's happening for Jawan, up to 68% of the snaps and ran 27 routes. That, the, that was the third most on that team. I think Jawan, I'm, I'm hoping that we get the touchdown because that's probably what you need this week. But in the tight end streets, things are rough. Let me just make sure that I know under, I understand what start of the week means. So would would you go Juwan Johnson over um, that uh, the purple and black tight end uh, from what Mark Andrews? Yeah, that guy <sighs> that scored zero two two weeks in a row. Uh, if you have the courage necessary. Okay. All right, and then and then <laughs> Jason Tucker yeah. Craft or. The guy I, oh, who doesn't Tucker ever Kraft. score any points? I, I, I prefer Tucker Kraft, but yes. I actually want to speak to Jawan Johnson and say – Oh, get him on the horn. Uh, yeah, you want to talk to him? Yeah. It's... Let's bring on Jawan. <laughs> Jawan, listen up. Uh, this you man, should be in practice. <laughs> this man put on titanium underpants, and I don't think he needs them because usually – It did seem a little intense. Usually when Mike puts on these crazy underpants, it's a great thing for the rest of us because we don't have to smell the dump in those pants. That, <laughs> that metal protects it. There's not going to be a dump of the pants this week. The, the play is really good. I would play him ahead of Mark Andrews, and I've been the one saying don't don't get rid of Mark Andrews. If you got him, I think you could still start him. I have. This is a man that's starting Juwan Johnson I, this week. Yeah, I've got Juwan Johnson as my tight end 11 this week, so I am starting him over a lot of other relevant, like Zach Ertz, Colby Parkinson, Tyler Conklin, Dalton Schultz. I would start Juwan Johnson over all those guys. All right, let's take a break, jump into the matchups. It's time for Fantasy Forecast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. All righty. We're jumping in. The Jets. The Vikings. Technically, the Vikings are, are the home team, but this is a London game. Mike, are you ready to rise and shine? Oh, yeah, the alarm's set. 6.30 a.m. our time, 9.30 Eastern. Uh, Help me. The Vikings are four and zero. Oh. The Jets two and two, and the DraftKings Sportsbook line Minnesota minus two and a half. The over/under is just forty points. Revenge game for Sam 
Richard Darnold. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I remember when he was coming out, like the, the talk about Sam Darnold was just how incredibly young he was. He is, you know, he, he was one of the youngest, if not the youngest, quarterback drafted in the last 25 years. So, like, when you talk about development, like uh, we got a lot of name submissions yesterday because Sam Darnold was originally – the sacrificial baby, mm -hmm. and the one that I I think oh, I we've decided it. it's the prodigal Sam. He's coming home, baby. The finally. prodigal <laughs> Sam has arrived, and he has been incredible. He was Jason's hungry for more this week. Eleven passing, eleven passing touchdowns. Um, this is an area where the Jets' defense has been great. They are number one in twenty twenty four in fancy points given up again uh, to opposing quarterbacks. They don't give up a lot. They have a great defense. This will be another test. Now, it's not, you know, this is a neutral site game. You've got Justin Jefferson and the return of Jordan Addison. It's been great for Sam Darnold, but I feel like this game overall from a fantasy perspective is a temper expectations because I love the defenses for both teams. I haven't loved what I've seen on the offensive side from the Jets at all. Like, Brees Hall looks on film worse than Braylon Allen, less explosive. He may be more versatile but less explosive. Like I went back and watched what like people are confused right now about Brees Hall one because the, what you're seeing on film is not, not good enough. One of the surprising things though, in, in the, the plays and maybe it's not surprising because defenses are focusing on, um, on Brees. But if you look at the yards before contact between Braylon and Brees, it is drastic. Even though it's the same offensive line, it's like they are, they are opening up holes for, for Braylon and not for Brees. And I think that's not, the offensive line, I think that is defense is going, we've got to focus on stopping uh, Brees Hall. The Vikings are a really good rushing defense. They they can stop Brees in this game. However, they give up one of the highest rates of receptions to the running back position, and that is kind of where Brees thrives uh, for fantasy. So I think Brees is going to be okay here, but not in the running game, just more in the passing game. Aaron Jones is uh, rushing line. On DK is 65 and a half, which is 15 more than Brees Hall. So um, confidence with both those guys starting this week. It's a low over under, but I can't imagine you bench either. Is Braylon Allen a flex consideration for you in a week where you're losing some running backs to the bye? No, not not for me. I mean, there there is a world where he can sneak in a touchdown. But I think without that against the Vikings, this is a tough matchup. He is still the backup. You're, you're, you know, you're going to get – around 10 opportunities. I just don't think that's enough in a poor matchup to to start him. Like let's say um let's say we know Singletary's ruled out. Would you rather start Braylon Allen or Tyrone Tracy? Uh I, if Singletary was ruled out, I'd take I, the I don't shot know. on Tracy. I don't know. I'll take the shot on him, but how about um Brees's uh, Brees's yards per attempt this year are 3.1. Mhm. Mm down from 4.5 last year. That that's unfortunate. The uh, always popular for me to talk about Jay Rico Dowdle against Pittsburgh, which you're concerned about that matchup or Braylon Allen. I I, I would go Rico. Okay. Um, are you are you guys? I get my biggest question. Are you here cooling is, off on Sam Darnold? Like in terms of starting go. him this week? Is are you playing Sam Darnold as a top twelve option? And I have right now he's thirteen for me, so he's just outside of that top twelve, but. You know, the the Jets, yes, we know their defense is very good. I'm not going to take away from them. But, like, they've played against Brock Purdy this year. Week one, it was they and Purdy had, like, 200-something uh, yards. He didn't have any touchdowns. But then it was Levis, uh, Jacoby Brissett, and then Bo Nix. Bo Nix this past week. So they, they haven't really been so what's tested up? just so yet. So would you just keep him in there, stay in the flames? I, I think I – I probably would, yeah. Garrett Wilson. No. Garrett Wilson has not no. finished inside the top 24 at the position at all this year. Um, in fact, in his entire career, it's only been 37% of the time that he does that anyways. You uh. have Mike Williams getting healthier. You have Alan Lazard, who has the connection with Rodgers. Um, it should happen this week. I, I can't imagine, like, the question of every week's start is still probably yes as a flex. But this is a team that could trade for Devontae Adams as well, so you need to be on your guard. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I th I think you just changed – Like Addison or Garrett Wilson this week? 
Uh, I mean, it's a legitimate question. Yeah, I would is. go Garrett Wilson because the target volume is more assured. He is still a talented wide receiver. It's been frustrating. I think we just need to change expectations. He's not a wide receiver one. He he is. We're hoping he's a wide receiver two, uh, and I think he will be from here on out for the rest of the season. In this in this matchup, he's more of a a flex option. But with the targets he's getting, I don't know how you could ever bench him. The Carolina Panthers. Well, one last note here because we are one of the next games <laughs> we're going to cover, but I, I want to stay here on this yeah. game. Uh, one last note because we didn't cover it in the news. Uh, Hawkinson is having his uh, window returned to practice opened. However, um, they are doing something where they're not activating it until Friday. And the reason that that is important is because they play Thursday night football on the 24th. So the window actually, usually you've got to be back. Um, you know, it, you, you count three games, but it could be four games. So it could be November 3rd if they choose. I mean, the fact that they're waiting till Friday says that maybe they are wanting to extend that. So just, I, I don't think they're going to rush Hawk back. I love the comment from Nathaniel Hackett about Garrett Wilson. We want to make him the focal point, but we can't force him the ball. I, I've never heard that about Jamar Chase. Never heard that about Justin Jefferson. I've heard I, we need to force them the ball. Yeah. That's what I've heard from the elite of the elite. Uh, not on the same page. To right be now. fair, they have forced him the ball for about three years. Carolina's one and three. They take on the two and two Chicago Bears. The DK Sportsbook line here, Chicago minus four. The over under is 41. Chicago, pretty heavy home favorites here. This is one where I, this is the first time in, it's the first time in a little while where I'm teetering. Yeah. Teetering. On, oh! <laughs> Andy's almost upset of the week. I, you know. I don't mind it. It's a four-point line. It's pretty big. And the Panthers can score points. And and that's the concern with the Bears is just scoring points. Uh, DeAndre Swift kind of uh, a resurgence last week. I was. Are you, are you back in? I was briefly tempted for this week to make him a start of the week. Me too. You were as well, oh, and, yeah. and we I mean, decided the, we didn't want to live in that world. But the, the matchup is there. The, it the, is. The Panthers are historically bad. Hold at on, hold on, run. hold on. He's DeAndre Swift. Yeah, yeah that's, that's that's why we didn't know, make him a start he, of the week. He deserves an apology <laughs> from this show because oh we, no, we did call after him, one week. Well, we did. To be fair, Mike, we did call him the worst football player that has ever played in the NFL. Which I think, looking back, possibly hyperbolic possibly okay so we'll he, find out this week he had a big week carolina if you're ever going to start deandre swift this is the week to do it i mean yes at home favorites carolina giving up 30 points a game to running backs like swift should be fine you say this is the week to do it because carolina is one of the worst defenses against running backs but jacksonville is also one of the worst defenses against running backs washington commanders one of the worst defenses against running backs arizona cardinal maybe the worst defense against the, those You're are the next four matchups the next for Swift. Four matchups, yeah. So he, he, I we're think be last. He's week, either going to make us eat crow or <laughs> prove he's terrible. Last week showed me that this team is is committed to DeAndre Swift beyond our whims. They paid him money and they made him, they gave him opportunities last week. They could have. We heard Roshan might get an extended look. Like Swift looked great. You just have to. You just have to accept that. He looked as bad as he could look for three weeks. He looked fast. He looked good. He got in the end zone. He's, he caught the football. I, again, Chuba, start of the week. Swift, start a bowl. Yes. And that's where you stop at running back. Now, at wide receiver, you've got a tremendous amount of confidence right now in Deontay Johnson and Xavier Leggett is a flex, in my opinion. Like I agree. Leggett is um, going to get more and more involved. He had some drops, still had put up a big game, and without – feeling and with Andy Dalton both of those players are very viable they are underdogs according to DraftKings so Dalton's 37 and 40 passing attempts should continue and and I think Carolina is going to give them a game it's just will Chicago score enough points because that's been difficult the drives sustained drives they've been a challenge will you play any of the wide receivers from Chicago because you I mean, I mean speaking of matchup the matchup is good it's I a, think across DJ, the board against Carolina. Yeah, DJ Moore should still be a flex play. Yeah, for sure. I mean, D, DJ Moore for right sure? now is for sure. He has 34 targets on the season. They they have not been connecting well. But if you look at the last three weeks, like DJ Moore has sucked for three, let's call it three weeks in a row. 
He had 8.3 fantasy points, 11.2 fantasy points, and 9.7 fantasy points. Those are totally serviceable. Uh, this He's on PPR. pace for 100 receptions in that run. Yeah, th this is this I, is totally I would serviceable. Say, I would push back and just say week one was five for 36. Keenan Allen played. Keenan Allen doesn't play the next two weeks. That's when he gets the 10 targets of 10 targets. Keenan Allen comes back last week. Drops down to six, and he's three for 22. Yeah, he scored a touchdown. And a touchdown. And it, yes, I'm not taking that away, but I'm saying in the two weeks that Keenan Allen has played, and it's been all three wide receivers, five for 36, three for 22. Well, That's why don't my we, concern. Why don't we order the wide receivers then? for Because you've got a Dunze there who, to me, looks like he might be the best wide receiver there. He didn't do much uh, last week when Keenan came back. This is a matchup you are fine to start against the Panthers. So who are you starting? I, mean, I would it's more by by a leaps and bounds above the other two. I would go more Odunze Allen. I'd go more Allen Odunze. That's how I would do it too. But I don't want to play any of them. Yeah, Baltimore is two and two. They're taking on the Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati. Bengals are one and three, saving their season last week. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Baltimore minus two and a half on the road. The over under is a beautiful forty nine points. The game opened at fifty one. It was bet down a little bit. This is a, I mean, this should be a fun game. Cincinnati is full strength at the in the wide receiver room, which has meant Joe Burrow has been getting it done. A little bit better, at least. And then Baltimore just pulverized. Pulverized the Bills last week. Mm -hmm. The running game was unstoppable. They're still favorites here on the road. Um, Where are your difficult decisions in this game? Because... You know, Lamar is going to be in your lineup. Burrow, I think, at home with a high over-under. You're definitely playing him. And obviously, Derrick Henry has been unbelievable. I think the difficult start question is over on the, the Bengals side of Zach Moss. His rushing line is at 43 and a half yards. But the – and he's been the main guy, and he's been good. But last week, the opportunities went to 50-50. So it's just, do you have – the confidence in Zach Moss here in in a bad matchup where Chase Brown 18 looks opportunities. like he's approaching. 18 opportunities for Chase Brown. He was the running back six last week. Yeah, I I mean, I, I don't want to start either. I mean, okay. in my situation, I would love to start either. But <laughs> if you've got other options, this is – this is a 50 50 or I, I was I still think it is I still think it is going to be more 60 40 um with Moss over Brown but Brown is really involved and he, he they both are important players to this team but the Ravens right now you know they're 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 number three in fantasy points given up to running backs averaging 14.4 fantasy points per game and half PPR scoring so if they just stay on average and then you're splitting that in half. I don't think you're going to be excited. You're basically saying, oh, is my player going to get a touchdown or not? But part of that is they're throttling teams too. So it's just, can the Bengals, if the Bengals can keep up, like the running backs will have more opportunities, but they, they've been it's up sketchy, by like three scores yeah, at halftime the past two weeks. It, it is. A, it, they're both sketchy. Sketchy okay. opportunities there because you have to make a lot of your opportunities against them. And like you said, if they, if they blow out the Bengals, you're going to be in trouble. The, the one thing I will say is that the Ravens do um, – they give up passes to running backs. And maybe that's because they've been throttling teams, and so the dump-offs are there. But that leads me to being Zach Moss. I mean, Zach Moss is already ahead because of the 60-40 split. But in the receiving game, that Zach Moss has been more involved. Five receptions two weeks ago, four receptions last week. I I, I think he will get four receptions um, going forward this let week. Me, let me – do something very like the the Ravens have been they've hurt us right they've hurt us if we were people that spent on Isaiah likely they hurt us if we drafted Mark Andrews they hurt us if you drafted Zay Flowers I mean Zay Flowers mm -hmm. has been non-existent for two weeks um, you can craft whatever storyline and narrative about the way they the Ravens win games I mean when you score 35 points and 28 points you might hope that Zay Flowers and Mark Andrews are a part of it I mean it's like if you have to paint this super narrow picture of a game script to make a player relevant every once in a while for the Ravens that's a huge problem now that being said I mean there's a world where Justice Hill is a better flex than Zay Flowers and Mark Andrews because it's, it's he's possible. on the field he gets thrown the football and their identity is executing in the 
passing game and using these tight ends to block. And, you know, Zay Flowers has been, you know, if you had told me he had two bad games, but he got targeted a bunch, I'd be like, cool. It's two bad games with six total targets between two games. It, he feels like he's completely boom or bust on one big play. Zay Flowers is so pumped that Mark Andrews is stealing the headlines because that's all we're worried about Mark Andrews. I mean, but Zay Flowers has it's been brutal. Like he's he's completely shielded the poor production behind Mark Andrews lack of production. I Four games in wide receiver forty nine. I don't remember if we said Mark Andrews receiving line on DK. <laughs> no. But it's twenty two and a half yards. That's the over under. That's not an alt line. Can we <laughs> boo that? That's just <laughs> you have a boo the button? actual betting we, line. And I'm I'm looking boo. at that and I go uh, which side, <laughs> which which side do you take? Uh, the the thing is, is the last two weeks. I and I hear what you're saying, Andy. The Ravens are good, and they're going to blow a lot of teams out. They're going to win this way often, and so you got to look at the game script and say, well, what, what do we believe is going to happen? I do think they got to blow in, teams out with the players you like, though. Uh, no, no, no. I, I mean, know, but my thirty five point scored. Right, but if they can, the Ravens want to do that all on the ground, if possible. You know what I mean? They they would love to just run very Chargers esque, um, and they have been able to. In it's really a matter of is the team across the field able to keep up? Like we thought a couple weeks ago, the Cowboys were going to be able to keep up, and they didn't. It was a blowout. The final score looked close, but it wasn't. It was it was crazy end of the game and onside kick and whatever. Last week was a blowout. So the question I have regarding this game, and it's specifically to you, Andy, do you think the Bengals will be able to score points throughout the game on the Ravens? Because that, to me, is whether you can start Zay Flowers or or pray for Mark Andrews. I mean, yeah, I think Cincinnati is going to keep up. Okay, so I think, but I don't think that I would start those players. No, no, but but we might come back next week and have a slightly different view of the Ravens when they're actually in a competitive game. And I hope this is they a lost their game. first two games. Right. Mark Andrews week two was actually not bad. It's hard to right. remember that, but he wasn't bad when they lost against the Ravens or the, the Raiders. Raiders. Anybody else from this game you want to talk about? Uh, nope. Okay. I, it, I mentioned it earlier, but just, you know, keep your eye on Eric all junior rookie tight end for the Bengals for dynasty. I think Miami's one and three, new England's one and three, and they get to play football against each other this week in new England, the DraftKings sportsbook line, new England minus one, the over under is 36 and a half. <laughs> I was I was genuinely because really, that's really high. I was shocked when I saw that line because it was way higher than I thought it would be. I, genuinely, it was. We talked about Ramondre Stevenson and Antonio Gibson in yesterday's show. The fact that the team has come out and said, "Look, we're, you know, we may have to start Antonio Gibson because Stevenson's fumbled four straight games." If you go look at like the DK probabilities for, you know, this Patriots offense, Stevenson's still the best odds to score a touchdown of any player in the entire game. So, but it it's not a it's not strong. Like they're not favoring the touchdown. Right. Plus one twenty five. So it's like a, a you know a little bit less. He's just he's the best chance. of this game, which because yeah. th th this game is is he's also the blarf tackle. He's also the favorite of of the Patriots to score the first touchdown in the game. So when you talk about start not right. start, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. still the favorite there. Um, you know, Ramondre, I think. I think you got to play him. I mean, if you have him, you got to play him. The the way that we're talking about these other peripheral maybe starts, the Cam Akers and the and the Madisons and the you know the, the peripheral options. I the, I agree. The, the I, Dolphins' defense has been horrible against the run. I, I don't. It's I don't get the minus one. I don't get. The, I think the Patriots win this game by by a, by at least a full touchdown. The, I am on the Miami side. Are you? Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Um. Fight. No, I don't think we care. Oh, okay. I don't think we care enough. Yeah, no, we yeah, the, 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 what's, funny, the, what's funny They're like, is, they wait at the dueling grounds for us, and neither of us are showing up. Like, eh, you guys are both, like, you're at home watching football? I'm not dying over this it's, game. It's really not a big deal. No, it's man. It's hot outside. I've been waiting for you guys for, on the dueling ground. Let me, let's go have a beer. Um, I, mean, I don't care. The, you want to you wanna switch sides yeah, on the yeah. bet? I don't care. I don't care. The, uh, the Tua-less Dolphins defense is totally different. Like, when this offense can't score anything, can't move down the field, the way that the other team plays against them is basically to just keep running the ball at them. Um, you don't need to do much to keep up because you're already in the lead. And the, the Dolphins' offense is completely inept so far wait, with their backup wait. quarterbacks. Odell Beckham Jr. is on the way back. 
Does is that he's change just, anything for you, Jason? Uh, he's not playing this week, though, right? I I remember the uh, just stop. Yeah, I mean it's stop it's irrelevant. With the Beckham. No, 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 no. He's passing the eye test at practice, guys. Okay, we'll see that. I I think he comes back right around when Tua comes back. You know who I was? That's what I would do if I were Beckham. Like, oh no, I think I need a couple more weeks here, guys. I want to be one hundred percent. I was gonna say, I wish they told me Tyler Huntley was passing the eye test at practice. Would you believe it? No, because I don't believe the Beckham one either. So <laughs> we talked a lot about the Tyreek Hill start. I'm still I don't I don't want to be rolling out a, a another flex option at wide receiver that has to catch you know one big play. It doesn't. They don't have the ceiling or give me nothing. Tyreek's ceiling is like he was complaining profusely on the sideline to the point where he had to come out yesterday in public and say. I'm committed to the Dolphins because trade speculation was happening yesterday. He was irate on the sideline. Okay, um, let, let me. I think they're gonna. If you're gonna lose anyway, force the ball and make your ha make your best players happy. Sure. Uh, so I think Tyreek. If fine. you're in a full PPR, he could get ten for five. Um, but let me let me ask you some legitimate names. Your start of the week, Dontavian Wicks. If you have Wicks off the waivers in a game where you know yes, he has play, the explosive I'll play, upside, I'll play Wicks if I actually had to choose those two. Okay, Christian Kirk. Against Indianapolis, uh, no, Tyreek. I would 100% play Christian Kirk personally. Um, that's not even close to me. Um, JSN? Tyreek. Brian Thomas Jr.? Brian Thomas. T. Higgins? Ooh. Probably T. Higgins. Okay. Where do you stand, Mike? Because I, I think we're a I, little bit further apart. Are you more on Andy's side of... I I, I was in pretty much in lock with okay. what Andy just said on that one. They, that I'm not going to force him out of my roster. But I'm not going to force him in if I have. I'm not playing Trey uh, Tucker over him this week. I'm playing Tyree Kill over Trey Tucker. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, in league of record, uh, Devon Achan, do you grin and bear it and put him into your lineup? I mean, f seven points and four points the past two weeks. You probably have. What if you had to flex Achan or Tyreek? Achan or I would I would go Achan. Achan's going to get more manufactured touches for sure. Also, if you look at the, um, j just the actual way that the Patriots play defense and what they have given up to running backs in the passing game, it does stand to reason that he should have, you know, four receptions in this game. I, I think A-Chan is going to be not not very good, but I think he'll be close to 10 fantasy if points. If you had Ramondre and A-Chan. I'd rather play Ramondre. That's where I am too. This is not a great, exciting no, let's game. let's get I mean, out of here. Jalen Waddle hits the bench then, and you're playing uh, you play Michael Pittman and – Mooney and those guys over Waddle? Yeah. As of now, yeah. And then you're not playing any more of those Patriot players? No. So can we, like, not talk about this anymore? Yes, please. All right, let's take a break, come back with some more matchups. All right, the Cleveland Browns, 1-3, and three, taking on the 3-1 and one Washington Commanders. This is the highest team total for the Commanders since week five of last year because they are three-and-a-half point favorites. The over-under is 43-and-a-half. And their implied total is almost 24 points. Right now. They're leading the division, right? Oh, yes, yeah. they are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and right now, you cannot stop their offense. I mean, we, we watched it firsthand last week. They are hyper-efficient, executing at a high level. Looks like they're the second highest scoring NFC team. The Saints are the most because of those first two fraudulent weeks. But <laughs> the... Jaden Daniels is a is a must start every week. Yeah. He, he's scrambling. He's he's rushing on design runs. He's completing eighty percent of his passes. He has a big play guy in Terry McLaurin. He has check down guys that you can trust right now. Like the the Washington side of the football, um, you know, Cleveland's a very formidable defense. But the fact that Washington's at home and that they're on a roll, and nobody's been able to stop them yet, makes me very excited about what we will get. This is week. there a chance that the commanders here, they've looked unbelievable. Two and a half games or so of no punts, no turnovers, and almost every single one of those drives being a touchdown, not even a field goal. Just unstoppable. They're the number one offense against fantasy defenses. Like, we, you know, if you're creating a lineup and you're looking to stream defenses, you go, oh, I don't want to play against the, the commanders. They're unstoppable. Is there a chance that it's, it's way more fraudulent than we think? I mean, the matchups that they have, this two and a half game right, stretch. Read them. The New York Giants, yeah, okay. The Cincinnati Bengals, and the Arizona Cardinals. They yeah, they have dominated that's, those that's teams. Not a, but the Cleveland Browns, the Cleveland Browns are a legitimately good defense. No, 
You don't think there's any chance? No. Okay. I, the, the problem. I mean, they're not going to do. They're going to perform at some, you know, uh, impossible to repeat level. So if that is deter, if, if, no, if doing just, what they're doing is considered fraudulent, if they don't complete eighty five percent of the passes and never punt, no, I'm saying sure could they come out and have a bad game, like a just a like no. a bad offensive performance. No, I don't think so. Yeah, the, the that's my that's my thought. The trouble for the Browns is that the defense is great, but the offense is so bad that. Eventually, this, the defense breaks. I think I think Cleveland will keep up in this game. The Washington defense is not good. Are you? Yeah. Are you? Willing, David Njoku should be returning. Are you willing to stream Deshaun Watson? Yes. I know, you know that's a hard thing to say. No, I, I'm not. You're not. No, not with the, the other options we've discussed this week. I mean, Sam Darnold or Deshaun Watson. I would play Darnold. Yeah, I'm gonna stay. I would play Darnold. I'm gonna stay in the touchdown. I'm looking at who can throw three touchdowns. I don't think Watson's thrown two. Anthony Richardson with no practice against the Jags or Deshaun Watson. Anthony I'll play. Richardson. I'll play Watson. Yeah. Okay. So that that was a div uh, yeah. We were we were different there. I but th that's that's more of an Anthony Richardson take. Like Andy's very anti. I thought that's Anthony that's Richardson. why I was I was posing like how low is Watson. Yeah, I mean, this game Caleb, in the matchup Caleb looks Williams. good. Caleb Williams against the Panthers. I'll play Watts. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the Washington defense struggled. They they did stop Kyler from being productive last week. They kind of stopped themselves. Um, but getting Najoku back is, is helpful for the offense. Amari Cooper's receiving lines 51 and a half. If you go watch that stupid, stupid play last week, 82-yard touchdown called back on a phantom holding call. It's really unbelievable. Had nothing to do with the play. And, and honestly, wasn't a hold. The Browns would have won the game. Browns would have won the game, and and Watson would have had a monster game. Yeah, I, it's I, just I, you everything know. is viewed differently from the Cleveland Browns if a fraudulent play call. If they were two and two right now. If they were two and two, and Watson's coming off a great matchup, yeah. and you're playing against the Commanders, you're going. Of course, you start Watson. This is a yeah. great. This is a what great was, game. For what him. was the original one that I said I would? Darnold. Or, yeah, I'd still play Darnold. But what was the other one? Richardson, Richardson. Yeah, went Darnold and then Richardson. No, I'm, gonna, I'm worried about re-injury with Richardson no, and, and, that's the, fair. and the single-digit accident. That's fair. But if he's healthy, if you could guarantee me Richardson's going to play the full game, he'll probably score more fantasy points than Watson will. But in this game, Cooper, you're starting. How do you feel about Terry McLaurin right now as an asset in fantasy? Like, are you – is he a buy, sell, hold? Um, I would love to sell him – personally off of two back-to-back -back games while the commander's offense looks unstoppable I think people are in and he is the number one target 10 targets last week was great touchdown in two straight weeks but I mean you it's not going to always be roses week one he had 17 yards week two he had 22 yards I think that personally that the commanders are at their peak right now of the season like like right this week they are literally viewed as one of if not the best offense in the league that's not what they are that's not what this Cliff Kingsbury rookie-led offense with one wide receiver actually is. And so I, I, if I could capitalize on Terry, I personally would. Let me give you the schedule. Cleveland this week, that's tougher. Baltimore on the road, but Baltimore has been the pass funnel. Then Carolina. Carolina's so, good. Baltimore's bad. Uh, Chicago. Uh, very yeah, good very defense. Tough. And, and then Giants. And then Pittsburgh. I mean, there, it's just a back-and-forth sled of – Pretty good defenses. I would say over the next month, they play majority good defenses. Sure. Brian Robinson didn't practice on Wednesday. Austin Eckler, we expect to be back. Monitor think, Brian Robinson. I think he's, he's been, fine. He's been a must start. Uh, and if he doesn't play, I mean, Eckler, yeah. Eckler is a good start. He would be. If Eckler was alone, he has been excellent. On a, I, You would play him this week if he was active? 100%. Yeah, concussion. I, I wouldn't do that. Why? Well, you because said without you're... Robinson. Oh, without Robinson. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said with Robinson. No, no, no. Without Robinson, I think he's an excellent play. But with that, with Robinson back. With Robinson back, he's just a, a – like I would I would play him over my – you know, I'm starting on Alan Lazard or Tyrone Tracy or like scrap heaps. He's looked really, really good on a per-touch basis. He's been awesome. And and because it's a concussion, not a uh, – like a soft tissue issue, I don't worry as much about the re-injury. Okay. Yeah, he's not there for me. Um, Zach Ertz is hashtag not a goose. If you need not a goose, yeah, <laughs> at tight end, there's your option. And Najoku, would you put him right back in your lineup if he, if he's in there this week with with how he looked to start the season? And uh, 
just because of the state I mean, of the tight end. He yeah. he only played 37% of snaps in week one and got hurt. He was the tight end nine that week. <laughs> he was the yeah. tight end nine. Yeah, that's that's why. I mean, but they went. He went to him a lot. Like, yeah. like at least our little teeny bit of evidence of what we hoped would see was that he's going to get targeted a lot. And the way that who's taking the most sacks in football? Watson. Yeah, Watson. Deshaun Watson. So the the underneath the quick release, I think I think that is going to be a crucial step for getting the Browns into the red zone. They need they need David Njoku. Jerome Ford. Yeah. Play him. Yep. All right. The Colts are two and two. They take on the zero and four Jacksonville Jaguars. The DraftKings sportsbook line here is Jacksonville minus three. The over under is forty six. I like Jacksonville in this game. I'm with Jason on the double starts to the week where I think this is the get right game for Jacksonville for sure. I like the over under in it. We talked about ETN. We talked about Brian Thomas. Um, not messing around with Trevor Lawrence despite that confidence. Yeah, I, I think he's a fine streamer. Him like, or Deshaun Watson? I would play Lawrence. I'd go Watson. But they're, 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 I, I see them as the same tier, so we're similar. Uh, Christian Kirk has had 10 and 12 targets the last two weeks. The the Where the, are you feeling? He had two just absolute disappearing acts and two great games. I mean, it's the it's sort of similar to what hap how last season started that they like forget Christian Kirk is on the team. And then they go, oh, yeah, yeah, no, that guy's pretty good. We should uh, target him 10 times and then 12 times. The 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 wild card is Evan Engram, which he was limited practice on Wednesday. Is he back? How does he acclimate? Does, is he ready to go right back into the full-time Evan Engram role, which that could take away from Christian Kirk? So that's that's the thing to watch. Is he right back in your lineup if he's active? Engram? Yeah. In this, as long in as, this economy? <laughs> as long as the news is – positive or if we can get I feel like we got to get like one full practice on the other side of the football Jonathan Taylor's the questionable um situation with Trey Sermon being your start of the week if Taylor's active how nervous are you in this matchup For, because of like we've seen this is the same ankle by the way that we dealt with oh was a it? couple years okay. ago where we would get a start and a stop and a start and a stop and if, Look, if he's out there on the ankle and you know what the re-injury risk is going to be, are you just you – I'd know, still play him, but I don't think he's playing. Yeah, I, I agree with both of those things. I wouldn't be nervous at all because of the Jaguars' defense. I would be excited to play him. And, I mean, I guess I would be nervous while I watch him run every time, being like, stay strong, stay strong, Jonathan. But um, the matchup is just too good. If he's out there, I expect him to be a top three back on the week. Oh, that's what I – Oh, there is – Anthony Richardson is out there in pads. Yeah, it does so. – it really does seem like all the reporting – Every I expect Anthony Richardson yeah. to play this week. He's been practicing, so it's not even like he's just not going to practice and go in. I, I, I fully expect him to be the starter in this game. Okay, so then – What does that do to the wideouts? Yeah, Josh Downs and Michael Pittman targeted <laughs> – Josh Downs targeted on 36% of his routes in two games. That's an unbelievably good number. He's a good player. Michael Pittman is a good player, but Richardson has just not given us the, the so, yardage that we need. What's funny is that when Anthony Richardson is in the game, I I feel like a better start, and I wouldn't start this player, but like Alec Pierce or, or Adonai Mitchell, like when there is fantasy value to be had, it's a 70-yard pass. It's, it's a, not – Two passes no, I, to Michael Pittman. Exactly. It's, not, it's not Ad Knight. He's no, sure. He's. I mean, he's, he's only he's in for a couple of plays. Yeah. But those plays that he comes. The, my point is, I could see Ad Knight Mitchell coming in here and playing twenty percent of snaps, running twelve routes, and ending the game with the best fantasy game because he came in on one of the nine routes that he caught a fifty-five yard touchdown. Okay, on. My I point you. is, I don't want to start any of them. Yeah, I don't really want to either. It, it's a nerve wracking. It'll be a nerve wracking game, even if you're starting Richardson. In terms of re-injury, underperformance, turnovers, all of that stuff. Yeah, I, I, the matchup's good, but it's also you know the re-injury risk is legit. If you wanna, if you wanna worry and pivot off of him, I don't blame anyone out there for doing it. Personally, you know, I drafted Anthony Richardson. My team needs big blow-up potential. This is here. I mean, Anthony Richardson. He can either get re-injured and. Um, you have negative fantasy points on your roster, very volatile, but he could absolutely easily have two rushing touchdowns in this game 
one bomb touchdown and end up as the quarterback one this week in a perfect matchup. I will say this for this game. It does appear that very high chances of rain in this game. Ooh, a little bit of rain. A little bit of rain. Maybe well, that, that's going to help the him his 50% accuracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Super good helpful. stuff. Yeah. Um, by the way, a couple of injury updates. Malik Neighbors not practicing again. Going to be a final decision leading up to the game. Devin Singletary not practicing again. No sign of Joe Mixon at practice yet. Not a great situation. They uh, they talked about him being day-to-day. And then Andy Reid said that they're still waiting for Rashi Rice's knees swelling to subside before he undergoes additional testing. What is going on? Um, he did mention there is no greater sense of optimism yet. So we just don't know yet. The swelling is uh, obfuscating the This is the, the weirdest. Testing. I mean, this is the weirdest injury situation I've I can remember. All right, we do have one more segment, guys. Uh, oh yes, we go do. ahead and hand them out, baby. The parlay partay worked Woo-hoo! out. They worked out last week. Yes, we, it did. We got three crowns. We got to put on our heads today. We three kings <laughs> of orange. Uh, oh yeah, baby. It's very. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Uh, last week, Mike went yeah. N- Nico over seventy yards. Yeah, we did. Got Tw- it done. twice. <laughs> Uh, Chuba Hubbard, Jason, over two and a half receptions. We made it. That was <laughs> it a took st- a long time to get there, but we got four quarters, baby. That was a sweat. Um, and then Garrett Wilson, under 65 and a half receiving yards, also hit. So for the first time this season, Triple Crown, very happy to see that. And, um, you know, you might as well just throw those the, the clown. Yeah, we don't the, need them anymore. The clown uh, yeah. wigs away. This week, I'm going to go with uh, Zach Ertz, 25-plus receiving yards. <laughs> Uh, Zach Ertz has been over the 25 he has. receiving mark uh, in three or four games. He's averaging four receptions per game. Um, last week he caught a two-point conversion. doesn't go on the stat sheet, but he, he's still a go-to receiver. Um, you got a pass rush to worry about this week against Cleveland, and I think Zach Ertz is just, he's just so reliable for those eight to ten-yard catches. He just needs two and a half of them. So I, I think – I think I'm going Zachers 25 plus. Yep, I'm going to take a touchdown this week, which is sometimes a spicy bet, or sometimes you're playing against the Arizona <laughs> Cardinals and you are the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, uh, they have the highest team implied total of the year, 29 points expected to be scored. That's three touchdowns, is what DK is saying. You should uh, mention who your guy is. It's Jordan Mason, baby. Anytime touchdown. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, he's seeing 39 percent of the 49ers. Total team rush plus targets, which is the same as Christian McCaffrey last year. Remember, Christian McCaffrey went on like this, like year long run of scoring touchdowns, and you got to the point where when you were betting whether Christian McCaffrey would score a touch, it was like minus two fifty. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's gonna happen. We all know it's gonna happen. So I think Jordan Mason against the Cardinals, he's gonna get a touchdown. I'm going Joe Burrow, two hundred fifty plus passing yards. We already broke down that matchup. The Baltimore Ravens are a uh, a pass funnel historically. Joe Burrow, they have they have unleashed uh, him and the passing game against the Baltimore Ravens since he ranks fifth in pass rate over expectation. And look, the Ravens are allowing the third most passing yards per game, so that's why I'm in on Burrow. All right, Ertz, Mason, and Burrow. That was Fantasy Forecast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, new DraftKings customers bet five dollars to get two hundred in bonus bets instantly. Download the Sportsbook app and use the code Ballers. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. The crown is ours, fellas. That's we look gonna, good. That's going to do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you for joining us and supporting this podcast. More matchups tomorrow. Fantasy face-off tomorrow. Good luck tonight. And remember, take those players out of your flex spot. Put them in running back and wide receiver. Goodbye. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball.